As the nation prepares to honor our fallen military heroes, the Michigan Veterans Foundation is preparing to build its future home. A groundbreaking ceremony takes place on Memorial Day for the new Detroit Veterans Center on Grand River at Forest. Since 1989, the Michigan Veterans Foundation has helped thousands of homeless veterans get back on their feet at its current location in the Cass Quarter. Joining me now is the executive director of the Michigan Veterans Foundation, Tyrone Chapman, along with U.S. Army veterans Reginald Harvey and Henry Madalonic. Welcome to American Black Journal. Thank you. Yeah. Good to be here. So there is something really heartbreaking about that phrase, homeless veteran, but that's a very real dynamic uh, in our community, and your work, of course, is focused on dealing with that issue when it comes up. Yes, sir, it is. Yeah, it's uh, hard for me to use those two words in the same sentence as well mm -hmm. uh, because most people hear that homeless veterans and we want them to understand that they are veterans first who just happen to uh, be homeless. But that's the mission of the Michigan uh, Veterans Foundation, to take care of the men and women who have taken care of this great nation and to see to it that those of us who are fortunate enough to make it home are uh, provided with the kind of services that are appropriate to help us make that transition uh, from being a soldier to uh, becoming a civilian yeah. all over again. Yeah, and, and I know that a lot of times when you're talking about uh, veterans who become homeless, there are some special issues that, that are really different from uh, the homeless population who, who, who did not serve. Absolutely. Well, especially when you factor in issues like post-traumatic stress disorder, yeah. traumatic right. brain injury, and the fact that for those veterans who have been in the combat situations, the rigors of combat and the rigors of being in the military are such that the transition is not easily made. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but for us at the foundation, it's a no-brainer. We're going to take care of those who've taken care of this great nation. So we've been around <coughs> since 1989 doing what it is that we are doing. A group of us Vietnam veterans all got together and realized that we needed to take care of each other. And, and so uh, the foundation was eventually formed. And so... We've evolved into this uh, major group as we are today, where not only do we do the transitional housing for the troops, we have a vet rescue program. So if a soldier is homeless for whatever reason, maybe burned out, evicted perhaps, or coming out of a long-term hospital stay, yeah. had no friends or relatives to pay their rent or mortgage, and so they come to us and we take care of them. We also have a veteran service center where we can do benefits explanations, claims filing, tracking, follow-up. And our newest mission is phase one of our all veterans village on the east side of Detroit where yeah. we've got about five houses in the Connor Creek um, subdivision and we rehab those homes in collaboration with Habitat for Humanity Detroit. Uh, along with uh, Bank of America. And so uh, Mr. Metlonic and, and Mr. Um, Harvey are both uh, residents in yeah. one of those homes. Yeah, talk about, uh, talk about the journeys that the two of you have been on from the service uh, to these, these homes over on the east side. I'll start with you. Well, uh, it's been an epic journey for me personally. Uh, I had a health issue. Uh, three years ago, and I knew I had to leave my apartment on the west side to get to proximity of the VA hospital because mm -hmm. I was diagnosed with uh, prostate cancer. And I knew I had to go for treatment for 12 weeks every day. Wow. So, uh, so you needed to be closer by? I needed to be closer by in the Detroit Vet Veterans Center at Park Avenue and Temple, where it is now, <clears throat> provided that stability for me. Yeah, yeah. So to make a long story short, <laughs> I am cancer-free today. Oh, wow, that's uh, outstanding. Uh, yeah, right. So, I, I mean, this made a big difference. It makes a big, big difference. And uh, if it wasn't for the Detroit Veterans Center, I don't think I would have been able to uh, get these treat yeah. treatments on a daily basis yeah. because... I lived way on the west side, uh, Joy Road and Southfield. Yeah. So, I mean, it would have been, you would have and, been a, and either a long bus and, ride and, or... And personally, I don't have a car. Yeah. I don't want a car yeah. by choice. Uh, and the Greenpeace people love me. Because yeah. <laughs> I ride a bike. Your carbon footprint's very I, small. I, I, right? I, ride a, I, ride, I have a, I have a elaborate bike. Yeah. I have a Schwinn, yeah. best bike I ever rode. <laughs> and I ride that bike. 365 days a year. Yeah. And yeah. so that, uh, my... Uh, Which couldn't have ridden the bike from Joy and Southfield well, all the way no. down. No. My personal physician uh, said that, that my bike riding 
and my walking the dog probably had a lot to do with my recovery. Yeah, uh, being uh, it's good, uh, so quickly to, to, to sort of bounce yes, back. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Harvey, talk about uh, your story. My story started <clears throat> from my Luther King High School. I was in ROTC. I was a second lieutenant when I graduated, and my father was a Korean veteran. Um, so I knew all the time I had military influence. My dad was always talking about going to the military. It's nine of us. Yeah, wow. And I used to wonder why my dad never named none of us middle names. He said that would have been 18 of us. <laughs> so he never gave us middle names. He says, enough keeping up with you guys' name. So he told me to go into ROTC and um, you go in the military with two stripes ahead of the next guy. So I went into military as a corporal. And uh, a corporal is a non-commissioned officer. Sure. Um, which be like a platoon leader, yeah. and that's what I was. And um, I started off at Fort, um, Fort Knox, Kentucky. Uh -huh. I did my basic, I did my AIT, Advanced Individual Training at Fort Dix, New Jersey uh -huh. on the East Coast. And I went to um, Fort Bragg, North Carolina for the 82nd Airborne, then I went on to Ranger School to Fort Gordon. So um, I had, um, uh, special ops training when you're going off into Ranger sure. and Airborne, which you uh, have to make jumps, so many jumps. Right, right, right. To be airborne. Yeah. And, uh, and talk about the tr the trouble that you've sort of run into. Okay, the trouble back. that I ran into was my house caught a fire and I got burnt out. Yeah. And I didn't even know anything about the Michigan Veterans Foundation, but I wound up when I got uh, burnt out, I had to go to the I was, they said, you're a veteran, we'll take you to the VA hospital. So yeah. I was like, okay. So I wind up going to the VA hospital. It used to be in Allen Park um, off of Southfield. So I went there, and then that's when they started telling me about different programs that you can get involved in. Then they started telling me about, you know, that you can get, um, a, you know, you can, you can file for non-service connection or service connection. Yeah. And I wind up getting my disability for post-traumatic stress disorder. PTSD, yeah, yeah, which a lot of guys come which home. Which a lot of guys, uh, right? Come and home. I was in Cambodia and Laos, yeah. right. on the other side of Vietnam. Right, right. So, yeah. uh, what 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 I hear in both of these stories is both short term and long term need, and I would imagine that that's pretty common. Absolutely, it is. Doing. You know, for us, um, in our early days, as we were providing services, it wasn't long before we realized that we needed to really expand on what it is that we were doing because we were having a tremendous challenge trying to find housing uh, for these veterans. And one of the things that we really were against, we didn't want to put them in an apartment building or some building where people drive by and go, oh, all those vets are there. Sure. These vets came from communities and neighborhoods until we wanted to reintegrate them back into uh, the neighborhood and help in our own small way um, be a part of the renaissance of uh, Detroit. Yeah. And so that's why we targeted that uh, east side of Detroit that had been long neglected and, and abandoned, with blight and abandoned of, uh, pretty much. There, yeah. yeah, and intimidating. Uh, but bringing the, the soldiers in, we're yeah. not easily <laughs> intimidated. Right. Uh, we are a real asset. We want the community to know that if you need us, yeah. please call on us. We just changed all the flags at all our homes. We have the colors <laughs> flying. We have our logo. Uh, so we want the public to know that we are an asset in your neighborhood, in your community. Even the youth, we want them to view us as um, a safe haven right. Uh, right. kind of a thing for themselves if they're right. confronted with something yeah. that makes them very uncomfortable. And then lastly, uh, we've targeted a building uh, that we want to acquire, rehab, and convert into a youth enrichment center, have veterans there as mentors. We've got some Eastern Michigan University and some other institutions on board who says, listen, we're going to help you out. Yeah. Come in, help these children make some positive life choices. We're going to serve one nutritionally balanced meal a day wow. uh, and see to it that these kids get what they need because ultimately they're going to be yeah, our future. Yeah. We've, we've got about 30 seconds left to talk about the groundbreaking on Memorial Day. Opportune time for yes, this, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs>
you know, it's been long in the making. It's been a, a <laughs> tre tremendous road to traverse, to say the least. Mm -hmm. For a while, it was like climbing a slippery slope. However, we've prevailed. We're excited. We're building a facility that we call the Pentagon. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so there will be a Pentagon in Detroit. It will be there. So we're excited about that. We're going to uh, take on some new challenges. And the neighborhood that we are in, we want to make certain that they understand that we are there to partner. Yeah. We want to integrate into the community. We're not just a bunch of veterans Become who are opposing part their of will. That That's right. So if there are things that you guys want to do, community patrol, anything you can think of after school recreation for the youth because we will have a yeah. gymnasium yeah. and we will still be serving a nutritionally balanced meal once a day for youth in that, kids community, in that community who live at yeah. or below the poverty yeah. level right. so we're excited the men are excited yeah. We're chomping at the bit to get in there. And <laughs> That's right. Monday is our day. Happen. We're All rolling right. out the flag, yeah. the colors, the vehicles, okay. fly over the whole nine yards. All right. All right. Well, congratulations on the new thank site. Uh, and thank you for being here on American Black Journal. Appreciate thank the you. invitation. Thank you.